If you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. I am your father. I want to apologize to you guys. I have not fully embraced the full-on ma major nerd that I am. It's pretty big. I'm actually a, a huge geek and nerd. And uh, what I mean by is this. Not only the things that I love, the fantasy, the sci-fi, which used to be kind of sidelined, now it's mainstream. And, I mean, the proof of, is in the success of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Marvel. DC, even. Right? All of this fantasy, all of this sci-fi. So, yeah, it's, it's more mainstream than it used to be. So that, But the behind-the-scenes stuff. My career, before I basically lost my career, great story there, was in the TV and film industry. But more specifically, everything behind the scenes with regard to computers. I could custom design, build, install train and support high-end video editing shared storage networks visual effects workstations i've worked with sgi and windows and apple and you name it across the board i've worked with it i've worked with it so much that i used to stare at crt monitors cathode ray tubes before we had our flat screen lcd monitors they were old school tube style just like our tvs were we didn't have flat panels yet so i would Stare at those all day long. Massive 22-inch professional Sony monitors we'd install with our Avid systems. We would install with our Softimage DS systems. We would install with different workstations across the board, these massive CRTs. Well, that blew out my eyes. That's why I have to wear glasses. Pretty convinced of that. Had I gone through my good portion of my career looking at LCDs, which are much more kind to our eyes, CRTs are, are awful. If you ever pointed at certain cameras, right, at certain frame rates, remember, you've probably seen footage where the, there's a scan line that goes across because it's not syncing up with the internal scanning of the CRT and how many frames per second and what is the refresh rate and all that kind of stuff. So, but that's brutal to our eyes. Our eyes try to make sense of that. LCD is kind of a more, for lack of a better word, organic type of thing. I'm way getting off track here. I told you I'd fully embrace my nerddom. I used to install $100,000 systems. Softimage DS, a country, a, a country. It is a different country. Um, out of Canada, in Montreal, a company called Softimage. Avid eventually bought them. And that's when I was introduced to needing to be completely certified and trained for not only the use of their high-end video edit editing system. This sucker is like 120K minimum 120k ran on state-of-the-art workstations and it but it would do visual effects like nobody's business we're going to get to that more in a moment it could do rotoscoping like nobody's business we're definitely touching on rotoscoping today so stay tuned for that i'm a huge geek i'm a huge nerd i've been trained up the wazoo for all this stuff and i feel a lot like ron swanson from parks and recreation there's this classic scene where ron is in a hardware store and he's walking down the aisle, and one of these home improvement type helpers there says, Hey, can I help you? And Ron just goes, I know more than you. Hi there. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. And he keeps on walking. That's how I feel at Best Buy. Or any kind of, it used to be Circuit City, or all these different stores that majored you know, and specialized in electronics. I know a lot more than you. That's not bragging. That's just education. That's experience. Yes, I want to fully embrace this now. <laughs> and boy, I've already done it, right? We've already talked CRTs. I've already name dropped Softimage DS, which became Avid DS. And what was so cool is Softimage had all this amazing technology. Their software and their ability to process video and add video effects and, and, and all these different things and motion effects and tracking and rotoscoping. They, uh, Avid then absorbed that technology, put it into their Avid Symphony, and eventually filtered down to the Avid Media Composer, which is really their workhorse and always has been. Of course, Avid started off with Avid Film Composer. That was the first time that editors and filmmakers were able to process film 
digitize it, even though they were just offline size, okay? They were proxies of the actual massive film size image, but the ability to digitally edit film was revolutionary. And that's why Avid remains the go-to today. If you look up Avid online, go to their Instagram, you'll see all the major Hollywood movies cut on it. And when I was working in the, in the industry, 99%, like 99% of all Hollywood productions were done on Avid. I took a lot, a lot of great pride in that. Helped me sell a lot of Avid systems. That being said, Cyberspace Films. Thank you, buddy. You mean so much to me. Your comments and everything you write to me. You've been with me a long time. We share the same interests. And I'm going to use your recent comment, and I hope that's okay, as a springboard, a launching platform from which we can talk about a lot of different things right now. One of which is you told me that back in high school you worked with Photoshop and Premiere and After Effects and you wanted to do v uh, vlogging and you really enjoyed video. And that I, I get the sense that you'd like to do that now. And then you said, hey, I don't have the breadth of experience that you do. Okay, here's what I want to tell you. If you want to work in video, do it. If you want to create visual effects and animations, do it. You only get better by practice and by learning and by experience. So the talent is there. The desire is there. I know you got talent. All right. And most people that want to get into this have some level of talent. But your desire is there. And I just want to encourage you to go for it. Go for it. You've got the background. You've got the desire. Now go out and make it happen. I see this all the time. It's an old adage, right? Unless you're writing, you're not a writer. Okay, the more you write, the better you are at writing. Now, reading matters, knowing grammar, how to use the English language, or whatever your native tongue might be. That, of course, all matters, but the act of doing something matters. When I used to train people on Avid systems, it wasn't me at the keyboard and mouse showing them and clicking them around. Here's your timeline. Here are your bins. This is how we do clips. This is how we add effects. This is how we go to the effects editor. This is how we process and render and do different things in our timeline. No, I would have them sit at the keyboard. I would have their hand on the mouse. I would instruct them. I would show them and I would point to the monitor. Okay, yeah, now check this out. Let's talk about this. And they would have to click it. And they would have to click through the series of steps through which and by which they could perform different procedures, make their initial first edit on Avid, and then adding transitions, and then adding visual effects, and then adding layers. And Avid has 32 native layers, and then you can nest those, meaning you can come back those into more. Point is, I could teach them all about Avid, but I'm sitting over here. Their hands are on the keyboard and mouse. What is that? That's the act of doing. Doing something makes you proficient. Doing something makes you better. I just want to encourage you to do it. Encourage anyone out there who wants to do this and get into this field, maybe start a channel, share a video with your family, whatever it might be. You just got to do it. I'm not trying to quote Nike here, but it's true. Just do it. Um, and so, man, I really encourage you to do it. I, I really hope you do. And if you need help, you just say the word, and I'm there in whatever capacity I can be there. Seriously, I'm there. And that goes for all you guys. I know quite a bit. That's just, I'm blessed with it. That's because lots of people, different companies have paid thousands of dollars to train me. I've just been blessed with this, and therefore I, but I have this knowledge, I have this experience, and I have this capacity to do a lot of different things with regard to video. So if you have questions, let me know. I'd like to get into more videos in the future in that I want to show how to make more videos. A guy at work recently said, uh, he's, he's awesome, Keith, like, hey, dude, YouTube star. And he, told, he went on to tell me that he wants to do some kind of YouTube channel podcast thing with his friend in Texas. All right, how can I do that? How can both of us be on camera? And I, I can throw out stuff, but that's, I really need, the, I, I'd like to show him more. All right, I can say a bunch of words to him, but really it's just going to filter through the ether. Not that he's unintelligent, because we're in, working in a, biz, a busy restaurant at the time. It's not the time to go, hey, these, these are the things you must do, and this is the software you need. Uh, don't remember this. You know, like, point is, 
I'd like to show you guys more of that. If you're really interested in learning more about video, say the word, drop me a comment. I would love to teach it. I used to teach it. And I love teaching, especially my favorite thing in the world, which is media creation. AI, artificial intelligence. There's a lot to say about the subject. Number one, I think it's named the right name. It's artificial. I think a lot of our quote AI, now that we use in different capacities, whether on phones and websites in different ways, they're fancy search engines, if you ask me. It's just another program running in the background that follows a list of commands, input output system. That's how it works and that's how coding works and that's how software works. I do though recognize the massive advancements in them being able to quote learn or take in more data, process that and apply it to the new parameters that you give it. I hope I'm saying that right. Medical advancements, right? Yeah, I can see as long as it's not invasive and not gonna hurt us, but if it's done for the betterment of society and mankind through medical advancements, if AI can help with that, I'm all for it. I'm sitting here today talking to you, not only because I'm surrounded by technology, but because of metal, medical miracles and medical technology. I wouldn't be alive without the advancements of medical technology. They put me back together, okay? Like a robo spine connecting C2 to the base of my skull. I really don't even have a C1 anymore. That's how they fuse me together because I was born the wrong way, if you will. Then my heart, a genetic condition, they had to crack me open like an egg and, and bypass a bunch of th stuff like I'm an old Chevy, hooking up different hoses. I mean, it's ridiculous. They're pulling, they're pulling different parts of me to then put in around my heart so I can live. That's a miracle. That is technology. That is advancement and human capacity to not only conceive it of an idea, but to follow through, implement that idea, and then use it to save lives. That is brilliant. And I'm all for that. I wouldn't be sitting here without it. You mentioned rotoscoping. What is rotoscoping? Maybe you don't know. Rotoscoping is the act of selecting part of a frame, creating a mat, separating it from its background, and then being able to apply that to other. That's kind of a really basic way to say it. I use rotoscoping all the time. I don't call it that. I call it I'm cutting something out, but that's the point I want to get to. I've spent 25 plus years in Photoshop and Avid. And in that, uh, whether I'm using a green screen or whether I'm hand selecting an image and then applying that to a layer. So there I have a background of a beach and I put a new layer over it. And I put the image behind me. That image right there has 70 to 80 layers. I created that back there, by the way. The Photoshop file alone was 250 megabytes. It has 70 to 80 layers on it. It's ridiculous. It started off as part of a field in Vermont, and then I added all these celestial things, stuff from my different bands that I like, some different astronomical things, a couple of planets. There's a skull right there that looks like the moon. So basically 80 different layers to create an insane composite. I just was having fun one day. That's one example of using layers. Okay, in Photoshop, you can just keep adding these layers and think of layers like this. If you have planes of glass, okay, I can see through this glass and I can see what's underneath, correct? Well, what if on that plane of glass, I have two fingers? It's a big plane of glass, right? And now from through this plane of glass, I can see those two fingers, but I could take those two fingers and put it on this layer. It's really hard to describe. I was already thinking what you said in your comment about rotoscoping and AI meaning the advancements of technology to make a lot easier, more precise and time-saving what used to take me hours. I used to take like the lasso tool in old school Photoshop and point by point, I would select something down to the one hair on somebody's head and I'd be selecting and I make drawing this little line and connecting these points, right? And, and basically what I'm doing is I'm slowly cutting out as if I'm taking scissors on a piece of paper and I'm cutting out a shape right? That's what I did in Photoshop, okay? Or I could do that in Avid. Even harder though with motion pictures, film, video. If I want to then rotoscope something, guess what? It's a moving picture. In that right now, you can see my hand moving across the screen. But if I want to cut this hand out and put it on top of the uh, image of the moon, I and, and have it being in motion, right? 
30 frames a second, 24 frames a second, 60 frames a second, doesn't matter. The more frames, the harder it is. With rotoscoping, you cut out one frame. Got it. And then it moves. Oh, crap. Right, anyway, you need, you need that, the image, therefore, I have a moving hand to go across the moon. Not just a still hand at one frame and I move that, right? I want the motion, okay? That's rotoscoping, being able to cut something out and, it, and it's in motion. And then, so I'm using my phone. My phone now, Samsung, by the way, Samsung Galaxy, built into the simple, although very advanced, photo editor built into Samsung Galaxy phones is the ability, the magic wand tool, right? Where I can use, I can erase images, which kind of just blurs the area, but I can select images. And I've used it on my thumbnails recently. I'm at one beach, I'd simply go on my phone, I'd just do a light lasso, right? A light kind of line around my head and, you know, this part, what you always see of me. And then the phone goes, shoop, and it figures out every one of those pictures. Now this isn't moving pictures, right? This is not something that we have to rotoscope over time. But the fact though, and I thought of it, just like you mentioned in your comment, I thought to myself, wow, if I can do this on my phone, well, it used to take me an hour in Photoshop to do that by hand. The phone now, I got it. And this phone's even got little individual hairs. Like, what? The point is, that's an, and I thought to myself, if my phone can do this, then I know Hollywood, if, if we're making, say, Avengers Endgame, right? And we have all those Avengers assembled, which are literally, I mean, I can't imagine the layers they had. They were all, they were shot at different times. They then composite all those things together. That is the act of putting one image next to another image. I have Cap here, and then I have Thor, and I have Iron Man, and I have different people swooping in and coming out of those magic ring gate things. Point is, you know the end scene of Endgame. That was an insanely involved composite, which required constant rotoscoping, and that these, scare, these actors, they might be moving across a green screen. That's easy. You can key out the green, gone, and I just have a moving cap going across the screen. However, however, if I have moving cap and he's walking in front of Thor, or he's walking by Iron Man, well, I have to then cut cap out for every frame, right? So say if they're shooting in 24 frames a second, I, I then have to every, now I think though that it's automatic now, right? The, the software can now move into, because we've had motion tracking forever. Motion tracking is the ability, I used to use Boris effects. I used to travel all over the US and Canada for, Bo look them up, Boris effects and specifically the Red product is huge compositing software that then plugged into Avid. So it gave this amazing, amazing wealth of tools, compositing and 3D titling and all this really awesome, amazing stuff built into Avid. You, then you'd run it in Boris, you do your composite, and it's like having Photoshop hooked up to Avid. That's what it was like. A lot like Premiere hooked up to After Effects, if you will. Motion tracking, where you have different points. And then, so basically, if I'm moving my head across the screen like this, right? I put a point, 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 and the software then figures out, okay, that's the moving image that I need to cut out of the frame. And I'm going to now put Eric's moving head and torso over a new background. Rotoscoping has come a long way. I'm thankful for it. This is just technology advancing. And it's making our lives easier, but also we're making better art for it. The time that I used to spend cutting images out, hand by hand, frame by frame, now I can spend actually conceiving of a concept or, or, or trying different images and doing color correction and actually doing other things and not spending hours trying to do one composite by rotoscoping frame by frame. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just nuts. The new game is coming out pretty soon. What, September 26th, I think? Echoes of Wisdom. Kind of a cutesy animated look to it. Obviously, this is not our next Breath of the Wild. This is not our next Tears of the Kingdom in that it looks nothing like those. I doubt it has the same open world engine uh, unless, no, I really don't think it does. But I don't know enough about it, but I do know this. Zelda is the main character. Link is thrown through a rift and lost like so many citizens of Hyrule. And this is my only concern that I hope is proved not to be a concern at all. I hope that Nintendo is not creating a new girl boss game. 
I have no problem with strong female leads. Zelda, Princess Zelda, always has been strong and has been critical, instrumental in the overall story of, say, Tears of the Kingdom. She gave essentially her life to save her kingdom. So that's beautiful. That's amazing. She's one of the team. My only concern is I just, I'm wondering, I'm asking a question, okay? Or this way. I'm asking a question. Is it going to be a girl boss game? In that we sh now we're fridging the guy, right? You've heard that term, you know, to fridge the woman, to refrigerate, where you have a woman in the beginning and then you kill her off it just as a motivation for your main character, for the guy. This has been the crux of so many action films and stuff like that, adventure films. I don't know what they're going to do with this. I just, my concern is Link. He's our guy. He is our hero. Link is the personification of heroism, of selflessness, of the ability to give everything for your kingdom, the desire to give your life for the princess, to serve the kingdom. And to put him aside like this, I'm still going to play it. I'm going to check it out. I'll probably make some video about it. So I just want to know what you guys think. I think it's too early to think much at all. I'm asking a question. Are they going the girl boss thing and fridging the guy? Are they going that route? That, this kind of new age woke thinking has not worked out very well for other game studios. Look at some of the headlines. The games that have tried that type of thing, all right, a fully woke, checkbox, agenda-driven, putting that into games has failed miserably and actually have collapsed some game studios. So... I don't think Nintendo's going to do that. I'm really cool with a game centered around Princess Zelda. That's fine. Just asking a question. Dream Theater. Really excited. My friend Joel contacted me today. I've mentioned him a few times in this channel. And Dream Theater, for a few months now, have had European dates. They're starting in the UK at the O2 Arena. It's their 40th anniversary tour. And I'm really excited. Joel sent me... Uh, an image of all the U.S. dates, and U.S. probably Canada dates on it. And there's three in Texas. He lives down in Texas. So on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2025, I'll tell you where I'll be, I hope, in Houston, watching Dream Theater, 40th anniversary tour. <laughs> I'm excited. Really excited. So yeah, and this will be the first time. I've never seen Mike Portnoy live. You know, um, I just haven't. I All the shows of Dream Theater that I've seen have been with Mike, the other Mike. Now that Portnoy's back, I get to see the original core Dream Theater. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, Jordan's with been with him so long that he kind of counts now, right, as original. Not taken away from you, Kevin. Not at all. So the point is, Dream Theater, Texas, I'm going to be there. Come join me if you want. Houston on, fa on Valentine's Day. It's going to be cool. Ungentlemanly Warfare. It is now available to rent and buy. I'm sure it'll show up on some streaming platform. Check this movie out. Worth it. Whether you rent, buy, or if you wait for it to be on stream, just watch it. It did not do well in the theaters. That stinks. Henry Cavill, Alan Richson. Um, amazing movie about taking out Nazis. And actually, it's completely historically based. And they're a secret squad that works for uh, Churchill. And they do all these amazing things. They stop German U-boats. And they're instrumental into opening lines of shipping and troop movement in World War II. It's an amazing film. Ungentlemanly Warfare. Guys, do check it out. It's an awesome movie. It's just, and it's just so fun. <laughs> You'll see. Do, do check that out. One Piece. I was at work the other day, and uh, one of my fellow One Piece fans and fellow nerd, she's like, uh, October, right? One Piece? Season 2? I'm like, uh, I don't know. No, I just, I looked it up, and it's slated for 2025. That makes sense, because about three or four months ago, they started filming. And I've seen the video about their the cast getting back together and, and filming Season 2. So that turnaround would have been heroic. And, and, and impossible. So 
I'm looking for, I would probably venture to guess, but what do I know? 2025 in the fall? Probably One Piece Season 2. That's my guess, at least probably before Christmas. That's my guess. Daredevil, Born Again. I have high hopes for this show. I hope they do it right and do it justice. I heard that Daredevil shot so much of the new season of Born Again. And they had like a massive episode number, for, you know, that they ordered like 18 or something. Point is, I've heard that they scrapped a lot of footage. I don't know why. I do know this. Original cast is back together. I can't speak to the writers and directors. My wish all along is that the original Daredevil writers and directors, writers, all right, uh, Drew Goddard and, and crew would come back. I mean, that's just... Daredevil season one is brilliant. Some of the best TV ever made. And, uh, and I'm... Oh, I, I could rewatch Daredevil season one over and over. I have high hopes for Born Again. We'll see. We'll see. I just, uh, I hope it doesn't go the way of so many other recent Disney Plus TV shows because those have sucked. So just to be frank with you, <laughs> just to be frank with you. With regard to cooking, I have a new steak soup called Plaza 3, a video. There's a 26 minute version, a one minute version. There's going to be a five minute version. Well, check that out. But more importantly, I want to cook different recipes from Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. I want your input. Leave me a comment. <laughs> I asked my sons. Landon replied, dubious food? Question mark. I lost it. And if you're a Zelda fan, you probably find that funny too. The <laughs> dubious food. Cute. But that would be funny. But the point is, I'd love to replicate recipes similar to or in the complete wheelhouse of some of the recipes that we see inside of Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. So anyway, Zelda recipes. I want to make some videos. You guys have ideas? Drop me a comment. Love to hear from it. Finally tonight, video games in general. <laughs> I've been playing way too much Fortnite. When I'm not making videos, when I'm not editing, when I'm not shooting, when I'm not cooking and shooting at the same time, and that's been consuming a, a lot of my the hours with which I have uh, available. Again, I deal with a lot of health things. It's not often that I feel great. When I do, I go to work. When I'm recovering and I need to feel better, a lot, I'm playing Fortnite. I'm watching Mystery Science Theater. The point is, I'm playing Fortnite. Doom. This whole Doom thing. I have a system. Jetpack, auto gun, and cap shield. And then I have uh, my shield potions and my med kits. Those are my... F I wish there was a sixth thing. Okay? But those are the things that I use. And I can win quite a bit with those things. Okay? I'm able to fly around with my jetpack. My auto gun's taking people out. And my shield is protecting me. I'm giving away the store right now. But that's the way I like to play. But and I, all the time I'm in the top five, top three, and guess who's at there at the end? Jetpack, cap shield, auto gun. It's all of us just flying around trying to outmaneuver each other. At that point, there's no strategy. It's just like, how can I just get an angle so the auto gun can get past cap shield? It's ridiculous. Here's the whole wrench in the system. I've got my favorite items, and I'm doing pretty well. And then those stupid Doctor Doom gloves, gauntlets, whatever. They blast me out of the water. This stupid green lightning bolt or whatever it is. Boom. And I'm out. Right? I'm like, oh, third place. I wanted to win. <laughs> so I can do really well. And I've taken out a lot of guys that have the Doom Gauntlets. I've taken them by surprise. I've gotten an angle. I've, and what I do is I wait till they've discharged all their massive weaponry. And then they have to like circle back to another weapon or get some defense going. That's when I come around real quick and try to get some shots in on them. So you can take out these guys with the Doom Gauntlets, but man, it's not easy. Here's the funny thing. I just wiped a guy out the other day. Got his Doom Gauntlet Gauntlets. I dropped my med kit. Okay. So I had jetpack, auto gun, cap shield, and the Doom Gauntlets, and then my, uh, my shield potion. All right. So I got those five things. Basically, a defense, three weapons, and doesn't matter. I have those things. 
Then I'm like, all right, Mr. Big Britches, Mr. Ego, Mr. Pride before the fall. I put down my shield. I take out the Doom Gauntlet. I'm like, I'm going to use these. These take me out all the time. Why can't I take someone else out? This is my moment. Nope. <laughs> I stink. I stink at that. I couldn't get, I couldn't aim them. I do really well with Cap Shield. The targeting, the feel of it, the defensive measures, and then using it for offense to hit people. Brilliant, brilliant piece of coding there. Brilliant. But man, I just do not do well with those Doom Gauntlets. I, I, I don't know. They're seriously OP though. Seriously. So there you go. Playing way too much Fortnite. If you want to find me, I'm on. I can't even write right now. Loud Boy 7K. That is the worst bit of English language writing I've ever done. Because my K also looks like a 7. <laughs> you don't get more low. Here we go. I'm talking all the stuff, to, right? All this nerdy crap. CRTs. L We're talking about rotoscoping. 100,000 plus dollar systems for editing. And what do I do? I write down some crappy note at the end. Loud Boy 7K. Yeah, I, I, put, I put lines across my 7, by the way. Let's try that again. Loud Boy 7K. I don't even know why I'm writing it. I think you can remember it. If you gave a crap and wanted to come find me, you can remember Loud Boy 7K. There you go. Now you can find me on Fortnite. Come find me. Let's friend up. Let's squad up. Let's duo up. I would love it. What's crazy is whether I need to relax from editing for six to seven hours straight until all unnatural hours in the morning, whether I'm coming home blasted from work, destroyed physically and mentally, what do I do to relax? I go in there and I kick some butt in Fortnite. How is that relaxing? Especially when those freaking doom gloves take me out and I'm stressed to the hilt. And then I'm like, and then, you know, when I, I ready right up, I go back in. I swear it's an addiction. I think eventually they're going to have to put a Surgeon General's warning on Fortnite. Yeah. I think they will. <laughs> Jeez. This is one of the saddest admissions I've ever made. Right? Anyway. Thanks for being here. This is the Loud Boy experience. This has been my... Thanks for being here. You know what? I could go on, right? You know that. You know that. But I'm not going to. I'm going to say, hey, please subscribe. Drop me comments about all the things I talked about today. The things I've asked you for. Those Zelda recipes. I would love to hear about them. Rotoscoping. If you wanted to learn Avid. If you want to learn how to do video, shoot video, edit video, do visual effects. If you have any questions with regard to media production... I'm your guy. At least, you know, I, I can write you a note. And I could go even further. I've thought about doing some videos about this subject. If you'd like to see those, let me know. That would be cool. That would be a cool kind of evolution of this whole thing, you know, because we're, we're, this is phase two. This is phase two of the Loud Boy experience. And this right now, the, the, all the topics we talked about tonight, these are the things that I want to cover all the time. Okay, I'm going to have updates about movies and about TV, about technology, about nerd and tech stuff and tech tips, about your viewer mail, all these different things with regard to the world of nerddom. That's what we're going to cover all the time. That's why I'm here. This is a Loud Boy experience, and you guys have a good night.